welcome and gather around, everybody. We're doing we're doing the podcast. Everybody, come, 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 come here. Hi. All right, let's go. Oh, ooh. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. <laughs> That's how he says it. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's I didn't even go. hear that part. It's in the very beginning. I should during probably... the during the Super Smash Brothers section of the trailer. I, I probably should have watched it a second time before <laughs> I started this. Uh, I watched it one and a half times, maybe. I watched it one first time. I watched it was on my phone holding my son. Okay, who was very fussy, but I watched it because that's dedication to the art. Sure. And the second time I watched it in peace, mostly just to get the end because like. His his last line in this trailer. So that, we'll get to that. It. I I watched a couple times. Yeah, I had to, I had to dunk on it a little bit. <laughs> uh, Will you want to try that first? I do want to try it. So the, Bob Bob yeah. pulls out of nowhere this uh, Nitro Pepsi draft cola. I've heard of it. I'm always curious with fancy sodas from the major soda providers out there. I am hesitant though because right on the can it says smaller bubbles. And that like kind of defeats the purpose of soda. I don't want to say anything. To, oh God, Jesus Christ! I don't want to say anything to to skew your opinion of it. Okay. So I will hold my. Yeah, that's the thing that happened. It exploded the first time that I tried it. <laughs> it's about, it exploded how everywhere. How does it explode if there's less carbonation? I don't. It's smaller bubbles, but bigger explosion. I guess is the thing. You'll also notice uh, we have a new background. Uh, I ran out of wood paneling. <laughs> So one of the panels does have the thing. I have it though. I got more. I'll do it later. Um, it tastes like flat Pepsi. Yeah, that's the thing. Why? That's the, the thing with it is that it tastes like flat Pepsi. It's who, stupid. It's dumb. Who would who would like that? But after having like half a can, yeah. I kind of I'm kind of into it. No, I don't. I don't think I like that. I don't think I like. That I'm only having it because I didn't have enough time to make a coffee, so I'm having this. Fair enough. <laughs> and I know you like your nitro brewed coffee. So what? You know, nitro brewed cola is like the same thing. Nitro brewed, co- nitro brewed soda. You're right; it defeats the purpose. Yes, it's smaller bubbles. It's 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 smoother, but like in texture. Yeah. Uh, with coffee, it makes it uh like like thicker, like 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 a like right. foamier. Yeah. And uh, and the bubbles last longer, but in soda, it's it's stupid. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Anyway. Hi guys, we're Hello. all here. We're a video game podcast. We're a video game podcast, and we also do snacks sometimes. Yeah. Thank you, Beats Forte, for the eight months. I feel like it's been more than that, but thank you anyway. Oh, I forgot to pull up. Uh, and Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the twenty-eight months. Uh, am I okay? I thought I was having a stroke. It looked like things were not working out, but they are. Uh, the power went out in the basement a couple times. I was filming some stuff, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Oh, today. We'll have to speed run this podcast. We'll have to speed run this podcast. <laughs> uh anyway let's get right into talking about the trailer yes i put in here a link to the um nintendo, nintendo life. life yes article because they have pictures mm-hmm. and we like pictures yes don't we? makes our life easier so here it is uh the second trailer for the upcoming super mario movie has just dropped and it's jam-packed full of references characters and moments that series fans will love most importantly if the leaks and yesterday's tweet from Nintendo didn't give it away, we got our first look at Princess Peach, voice acted by Anya Taylor-Joy, who made a brief appearance during the Direct. It looks like the Mushroom Kingdom's ruler is going to take part in the action, as she absolutely deserves to. We should probably talk about that. Yes. Did you see before the trailer? Did you watch that stuff? No, I didn't watch the. I didn't so, watch the direct itself. So you know how last time they had Chris Pratt and uh, Jack Black talking, and yes. Chris Pratt was very cringy. Yes. This time they started with Anya Taylor Joy. Okay. She was great. Yeah. Uh, she said. Uh, she said, "Here we go." Okay. So she said it right. <laughs> English is not her first language, though. So no, she said it right. She said the right thing instead of "here we come." She said "here we go." But he says "let's go." He says "here we go." He just says that too. Oh, that's right. He, does. he did a little bold. Oh. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she said "go" and not "come." Right. So <laughs> I like her more. Fair enough. <laughs> then we saw Seth Rogen, okay. who uh, looked like he was in like a villa or some He's shit. Probably high. 
Uh, he was, he's talking about how he's loved Nintendo all his time. Yeah. Ever since he played on a Play Choice 10, he named it Oh, Play that's, Choice that's, 10. uh, that's specific. And he didn't have to think about yeah. it. Yeah. Although it did look a little bit like he was reading off of the script. Right. Uh, so he, and then he also said that his dog's name is Zelda and then he showed yeah. the dog. So he, he, I heard he, about that. He yeah. had to prove his chops that he's a <laughs> Nintendo fan. Um, so whatever that all that happened and then they finally showed the trailer uh anyway also joining peach in the trailer is donkey kong played by seth rogan who revealed he owned a play choice 10 and has a dog named zelda donkey kong looks to be an enemy at least initially uh definitely initially yes later we see him riding a, a, a cart uh taking on chris pratt's mario on top of some iconic red girders like you know like yes. donkey kong yes <laughs> uh we also got a bunch uh, a much better look at luigi who only made a brief cameo at the end of the first teaser take a look at some shots from the movie and here they are yes uh, i also want to bring up they may, they have promotional images uh that prove that it looks to be like brooklyn do do we have yeah. this discussion how it, I, we don't, we're not sure if it's going to be new donk city or brooklyn yeah, no, we did, and it does look like they're going the the classic Mario story route, and that they are prom- plumbers from actual Brooklyn who get transported to the mystical realm of the Mushroom Kingdom. Right. Whereas in the current games canon, they were just always residents of the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, well, it's confusing. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a bunch of different canons. Uh, it in Odyssey, it seemed like they were they could have been from New Donk City, yeah. or at least they had something to do with New. Well, Donk Well, Yoshi's City. Island too. They like they were babies in the Mushroom Kingdom. So, babies in the Mushroom Kingdom or baby? Well, yeah, no. Well, yeah. And then how did wait how, in, so, in Yoshi's Island too? How do they end up on Yoshi's Island? I think they're on their the stork is bringing them to the Mushroom Kingdom, uh, but they land in Yoshi's Island. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh. There's a lot of, like, I guess you would, I mean, references to the game, but there's a lot of, like, they threw a lot of, like, level, like, assets yeah. around. There, like, there were, like, there were um, the sections where Mario's actually platforming and, like, you know, on, on platforms from the game, just, like, hovering in the air like they would be in the game. Yeah, I'm con- I'm confused yeah, like, by that. <laughs> like, why are those there? Yeah, why is that this image right here? Yeah. Why is that a thing? Like, you have to like. Maybe she's like. Maybe Princess Peach is trying to like. like this is an obstacle course. He has to do. Has to pass it in order to, you know, prove that he's the worthy hero. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, also, here's a a bunch of smart looking toads. Yeah. Around a map of, I guess, the Mushroom Kingdom and all of the other islands and yeah. such things that i guess bowser is looking to take over maybe until um, they make their way over to the mushroom kingdom now three of those islands look exactly the same <laughs> <laughs> usually the the joke is what is it it's grass world ice world lava world desert worlds uh yeah you know and they they're just like no one desert world three green worlds and two lava worlds well i think that one of those lava worlds was the ice world Okay. And then Bowser took over and now it's in flames. Okay. Uh yeah, I think it's the one on the right. You see at the very end there's some ice. Yes. Yeah, that one is the okay. one that uh that Bowser took over. Uh and it seems as though uh Princess Peach is like the badass here. It seems like yeah. she might be the actual hero. <laughs> which is which is an interesting way to go. Like and that's, I mean I'm down know, for that. That's not a bad thing, but I think you know, we're getting the Super Mario Brothers movie, and it's already. It looks like Luigi's the one who gets kidnapped. Yeah, which is I'm, I'm which honestly is, fine with. Which is already like an interesting twist on the formula. But yeah. you know, you go to a Super Mario Brothers movie, you expect to see Super Mario do cool stuff. If they're gonna right. make him like kind of useless for the majority of the movie, you know that. I don't. I don't know what kind of creative decision that is. To be honest with you, uh, yeah. I mean, I, they're they're changing it up a little bit. I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that. And like, it's nothing wrong with changing it up. It's just, you know, why why, why would you go see a Spider Man movie if Spider Man sucked the entire time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like Mario is going to be like figuring out his, yeah. his, his his like abilities and stuff. Yeah. Uh, in in the uh, 
Oh, of course I got rid of it. Oh, there it is. It it in this you see uh Princess Peach touches a fire flower and, yeah. and looks like she gains an ability from that. And then you also have uh Mario with the uh Tanuki suit. Yes. So it looks like he's getting some abilities from there, and also mm-hmm. you have uh Mario in a cart. Yes. Uh it Mad Max style, it yeah, looks like. But still in a cart. So between that and the beginning of the trailer, which I know some people are saying that it, it's a reference to the original Donkey Kong. To me, that just straight up looked like a Super Smash Brothers reference. Because the it, fight, the fight between yeah, Mario yeah. and Donkey Kong, it looks like they're not just pulling from the main Super Mario Brothers games; they're pulling from Everything. all yeah. Super Mario Brothers games. So I, there's I probably really fault there's probably gonna not. be a golf section yeah. in this movie. <laughs> They'll play sports with each other. Maybe the final battle will be a sport. Yeah, I'm. I don't fault them for not doing like a traditional Donkey Kong situation yeah. because there's not much to go off of for traditional. Donkey right. Kong. Also, different girl in Donkey Kong. True. Okay, so let's let's go to that now. Okay. Um, I didn't put this in there, but I could just show you. Here's a prom- promotional image. Yeah, I saw the poster. Yeah. Uh, this is what I saw that was like, okay, this is Brooklyn because yeah. they are on what appears to be Brooklyn Avenue. <laughs> so at the very least, yeah. New Donk City has a Brooklyn Avenue. <laughs> uh, but this does look like more Brooklyn than New Donk City. Yeah. Also, that's a New York license plate. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, also, th- this is what everybody was pointing out. That right there looks like Pauline. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it is, but it that's her outfit. Yes. You know, it definitely looks like her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's got the brown hair and, and she's tall. And actually, the faces look a little Pauline. Uh, it could just be an Easter egg. I don't yeah. Know. And then here they have Super Mario Brothers plumbing, and it looks like that's that's traditional yeah, that's Mario the, illustration right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the cover art for the first game in Japan, <laughs> <laughs> just without the plunger. So uh, I like this. This is this looks awesome. Yeah. The the movie like on a whole, aside from like your tip, like the typical like jokes and stuff that you would see in a kids movie like this. It looks like a good movie. It looks like what you want out of a Mario Brothers movie. What I don't like is the rest of the promotional images. We're the Mario Brothers. Plum plumbing's our game. Okay. Get a game. Do you get that? No. Uh, can you can you explain it to me in excruciating detail? Game. They're video game characters. Oh Yeah. So here you just got Luigi. <laughs> okay. This one doesn't make any sense. <laughs> these are going to go on folders that five-year-olds are going to bring to mm-hmm. kindergarten. Mm-hmm. That, that's what these that's are. That's exactly, yes. That's what these are. How much do you think someone got paid to write that? Oh, probably a lot of money. Probably, probably paid for intern. their grad degree. She can do anything. Well, that's an important message. As a girl dad, as a hashtag girl dad, that's an important message. That's to just bestow. such a lazy <laughs> sentence. It is. Toad, I fear nothing. <laughs> that is a lie. That is that is a lie. Well, this is Captain Toad, this one. He's not wearing the hat, though. Uh, yeah, you're right. He's regular Toad regular now. He will become back, Captain yeah. Toad eventually. I want to see him fear nothing in the in the movie. I yeah. want him to be the fearless one and Mario to be the scaredy cat. That would be funny because he's fucking Toad. Yeah. Anyway, uh, is that it? Oh, that's it. That's it for the promotional images. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what else to pull from. Uh, oh, we got Yoshi's. Did you see that? Yeah, I did see that. There's a pink Yoshi. There is a pink Yoshi. There's blue Yoshi. There's yellow Yoshi. A lot of Yoshi's. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess one of the islands might be a Yoshi's island. There you go. Actually, yeah. Isn't that? Uh, no, wait. Yeah, the Mushroom Kingdom. Is that one? Yo- is that Yoshi's island to the right? Oh, I think it is. Doesn't have eggs. Doesn't have big old eggs. Yes. Those don't look like big old eggs, but they could be. Oh no, wait. Oh no, that's toad. That's a toad hat. <laughs> I thought that was. I thought that was one of the eggs. I don't know. Well, I'm sure one of the islands yeah. ends up being Yoshi's Island. Um, and then yeah, at the very end, you see, uh, Rainbow Road. Rainbow Road doing a Mario Kart thing, and it looks like a lot of characters are with him, and they're going yeah. together. You have Donkey Kong all of a sudden on his side, Peach, uh, Toad. Who's behind? Oh, the cool Donkey Kong. What's his name? Oh, Funky Kong. Funky Kong. This is our first look at Funky Kong. There you go. He's right behind Donkey Kong. And I think, is that Diddy over there? That might be Diddy over there. Uh, All the way to the left. 
I think so. You have a. You also have Cranky Kong in the very beginning, yes. uh, next to Princess Peach. I guess mm-hmm. this is like the. Yeah, it's just your typical gladiator arena, where with like different know, leaders from different worlds. Yeah, I guess exactly. that's Donkey Kong's island right yeah. there, probably. Donkey Kong Country Bob. Okay. Okay. Apparently, that's part of the same universe. Yeah. Um. And then, uh, I, I, once again, Mario doesn't say too much. He says suspiciously less, I think, in this trailer mm-hmm. than in the previous one. What, you think that they did that on purpose? I don't want to say they did that on purpose. But it is suspicious that, like, in the last trailer, he says two full sentences clear as day. And in this trailer, he mostly just makes grunts, mm-hmm. a pretty decent wahoo at the end, and... I... His his own like the most sentence he says is in the beginning is like in a hushed tone. See, I don't think uh, he says wahoo. I, I I think the wahoo is weak as hell. <laughs> I think there's this big build up, and then he goes wahoo. I think no, I think he gets it well enough. I don't, you know. Again, this isn't gonna be Charles Martinet. This isn't right. going to be Captain Lou Albano. This is going to be something different. Somebody said it's not. Everybody's expecting a Charles Martinet, uh, uh, like, 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 yeah. like interpretation, and it's not going to be that. So take what you can get. And I was like, take what I can get. You mean shit? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I mean, know. I we don't have enough to go off. Yeah, of still. but uh, you know, I feel like there could be a lot more, and with almost literally anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It does feel if like you're going for A-list actors. I feel like there could have been a little more care put into this. Yeah, I mean, I don't. What we've seen so far. Look, I don't think he's the the right choice right. for this role because I do believe that Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt can play only two roles: um, lovable idiot like Andy Dwyer or the Lego Movie, uh, and Star Lord. And Star Lord is with a massive asterisk in that only directed by James Gunn. Right. Anything else, like he kind of just doesn't work in and mario does not fall under that very specific umbrella for him right um having said that i don't think his his acting in particular is gonna be what holds this movie back if anything i think if anything's gonna hold this movie back it's gonna be the trappings of illumination as a studio and you know american cgi animated films not made by pixar do you mean like just obvious tropes obvious like, like things you, like you're gonna see everything happening from a mile obvious away. tropes the easiest gags uh a gag a minute to make sure that the four-year-olds in the audience aren't you know bored or distracted okay you know i just that's what i that's what i fear for this movie you know i the acting is like secondary no, I, be- I believe yeah. you. That all I, I, I see that as well. Yeah. I think that the performances from literally everybody else is going to carry it. So if Mario doesn't talk too much, I'm down. Yeah. Or even <laughs> if he even if he talks a lot, you know, and he's the weakest of the whole cast. The rest of the cast is you know can elevate the movie. Yeah. But I, I've know? loved what I heard from Luigi, mm-hmm. uh, Charlie Day. I love what I heard from Peach. Peach yeah. seems awesome. She, in this. she sounds she like she picks Peach, up yeah. an axe very <laughs> early in the trailer and looks like she's gonna go kick mm-hmm. some ass. Jack Black sounds great as Bowser. Jack Black sounds great. Uh, yeah. So I, I liked everything I heard. Uh, literally just every time I hear Chris Pratt, I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and even the toads sound good. Yeah. So uh, I think there's enough. I, I Otherwise, I like what I'm seeing. I, I, I like the imagery I see here. I don't think they could fuck this up that yeah. bad. I'm excited for this movie. Yes. I just have my reservations about some things. Yeah. But I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be at best, you know, not at best, I think at best it, it'll be good, but yeah. I think we're going to look at an okay time. I don't think we're going to be, because Nintendo is heavily involved in it this time. I think I'll like it. Yeah. And that's as much as yeah. I Nintendo's in, say. involved in it this time. So they're not going to, you know, release into the world something that is dreadful. Right. So they're going to at least try to make this. You know, not just representative of what the games are, but good in a actual movie sense. Right. I I do think they'll do a good job. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm just, you know, I, I have to be ornery because I've known Mario for so many yeah, years. Yeah, and, and here they are on the big screen. Because we're, you know, grumpy dudes in our 30s with a podcast on the internet. What else are we going to do? Exactly. Uh, I don't think there's much else to say. When is this thing coming out? April. April. Okay. No no hard date? Uh, I think there is a hard What's date. What's with the Nintendo life in these ads? Look at this ad. Look at this. <laughs> What's going on? It moved, too. Why isn't it moving this time? It maybe is it's, maybe it's targeted. April seventh. Okay. Happy birthday to Will. Two days. Two days before. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what do you people think? Yeah. Uh, thank you to Lubick for the seventeen months. Thank you Sukaza for the fourteen months. The new setup looks great. Thanks, dude. T Bird. Thanks for the two months. M Jackson. Thanks for the seventeen months. Almost a year and a half, and it's still amazing here. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, could be worse. Could be Nikkei. What is Nikkei? Okay. Is that? I a, should know what that is. That's isn't that like a mobile game company? Yes. Oh um, no! It's a, it's a, it's a hentai JRPG. Oh yeah. Well, not a JRPG. It's like a collect the. It's like a gotcha like. Right. Collect the 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 anime girls. I understand. I understand. Uh, did I miss the Mario movie part? You literally you just did. did. We just finished. There's really not much to talk about. It looks good, and they reference a lot of video games. Yes. Uh, that's all we could say. Uh, let's... So, I didn't really order these. Okay. Uh, I tried to put um, all the, the news about this the Activision-Microsoft deal like grouped up. Right. I did try to order it and like put it in an order that I think makes the most sense. I'm gonna move that towards the top. Okay. Uh but I am going to leave it under this news that broke literally right before we started. Okay. Uh Nintendo shuts down Smash World Championships. Oh no. This is another Nintendo Life article. Hey, do you see the big cubicle wall on uh, as as an ad? on my screen here <laughs> oh gee wonder, wonder where th- that came from uh the unofficial super smash brothers series smash world tour has announced the cancellation of both upcoming smash world tour championships as well as the 2023 tour after ongoing communication with nintendo the event organizer received a notice quote from the company that it could no longer operate Here's part of the lengthy official statement from Smash World Tour, which you can read in full via the link below. So Smash World Tour, you know, it's a Smash tournament. Yes. I thought this was an official one, but I guess it's not. And that might be why it's being canceled. It seems like it's official, but it's not. Um, But they were supposed to have the final event of the year, like the big one, like Mm -hmm. the big event next weekend. Oh wow! So they, so they, it was the grand final yeah. of the event was next, and everyone weekend. was ready to go. And it was like, nah. Yeah, they had a lot of events this year, and that was the one that they, yeah, they right, couldn't right. wait. They yeah. couldn't wait to for that, <laughs> and then say, by the way, next year, don't do it yeah. next year. That would have been at least nice, you know, if they could have put it off for a few more days. Anyway. They said, without any warning, we received notice from the night before Thanksgiving from Nintendo that we could no longer operate. This was especially shocking given our discourse with Nintendo the past 12 months. Since then, we have been working around the clock to take the proper steps logistically, as well as to prepare this statement with proper legal guidance. In 2022 alone, we connected over 6,400 live events worldwide with over 325,000 in-person entrants making the Smash World Tour or uh, SWT or the Tour the largest esports tour in history for any game title. The championships would also have had the largest prize pool in Smash history at over $250,000, which sounds like a lot but it's fucking pennies <laughs> compared to like what league does and dota and yeah. yeah and this game gets more views than some of those games yep. that have insane prize pools or, yeah. or I, I i should say prize pools that are similar to this get way less views than smash brothers yeah. does league and stuff they get they're in like the fucking millions yeah. of views but anyway 
The 2023 Smash World Tour planned to have a prize pool of $350,000. The impact that the tour has had globally cannot be overstated. The amount of tournament organizers, competitors, and fans that will affect that this will affect is hard to measure. We realize just how much we could expand our spotlight to lesser known regions as well as Smash World Tour prize pools in 2023 and beyond, establishing a much healthier ecosystem in the community around the world. We believe this decision by Nintendo sets all of the sets all of that back significantly, which is incredibly disappointing. And there's a lot more. Uh there's a lot more in the statement but yeah, uh but that's like the highlights that's this sucks it's terrible. it really does like i mean obviously this is a tournament that's going on for years and nintendo must be aware of it so like why now all, all of a sudden out of nowhere nintendo's like hey no no it's like i know nintendo is very strict about licensing out smash brothers for tournaments and like working with tournaments and stuff mm -hmm. and you know they're they are they're they own the game they can control the game like i get that but again they've been working for with this tournament in particular for years now so who wait that's why i'm confused because nintendo life called this unofficial right uh but didn't nintendo they they partnered with panda global to officially license to, to launch the first officially licensed mm -hmm. Super Smash Brothers Championship circuit in North America coming in 2022. So what was that? What was that called? Uh, Did that ever even happen? <laughs> uh, hold on. This is this is where my confusion is. Uh, in the actual medium post, it says. Uh, we thought there was a chance that last year's Smash World Tour Championship was going to get shut down. In November of 2021, after the Panda Cup was first announced, Nintendo contacted us to jump on a call with a few folks on their team, including a representative from their legal team. We truly thought we we might get shut down, given the fact that they now had a licensed co uh, competing circuit and partner in Panda. There you go. So it's, it wasn't official yeah. in any way, but it kind of felt like yeah. it, it might have been because Nintendo has tried to do something with panda global uh nintendo reached out to let us know that they had been watching us build over the years and wanted to see if we were interested in working with them and pursuing a license as well they made it clear that panda's partnership was not exclusive and they said it had not gone it had not gone unnoticed that we had not infringed on their ip regarding game modifications and had represented nintendo's values well they made it clear that game modifications were their primary concern in regards to coming down on events, which also made sense to us given their enforcement over the past few years in the regard. That that seems like really important information. Yeah. It seems like Nintendo was totally cool with this until a week ago. Yeah. Which is two weeks before their final event of, of, of the year. Yeah. So here's here's their uh, the Smash World Tour schedule. Uh, you see they had a, a bunch of stuff happening this year. Yeah. And then all the way next next week, San Antonio, Texas, December 8th to the 11th, Smash World Tour Championships. It was, it was, the, it was the big one. Uh, and they, they can't do it anymore. So when was that conversation that they had with Nintendo? Uh, it said it in there. I, I just forgot. November 2021. 2021. Okay, so a year ago. Yeah. That really sucks. So it, I, I think that Nintendo is uh getting cold feet about esports again i think last year they were interested and they partnered with panda global but then nothing really happened yeah um it's did so, they even do the tournament I is what i know because i don't see anything about it and i don't, don't remember hearing yeah. about it and when that was announced it was scary because like you know like smash brothers esports has specific rule sets and stuff yeah and and you the nintendo tournaments that have happened in the past they have shitty rule sets like items and, and smash balls and stuff. Yeah. And they, it makes it so it's like the game is completely random. Yeah. Uh, so have, so partnering with actual uh, uh, smash brothers, esports people uh, is interesting. And it, it, it could mean a lot for the smash brothers community, mm -hmm. but also Nintendo could royally fuck it up like they just did. So I don't know. Panda global has played a large part in poisoning the water. What? <laughs> <laughs> This is a very long medium. Post. People hate Panda right now. Yeah. It looks like in the chat. People are not liking Panda Global. 
I will give Panda Global a little bit of credit because they were about to make a controller with yeah. crowd, with a lot of crowdfunding, and then they gave all of the money back and said, "We don't want to. It's going to take longer, and we don't want to hold this money." Wow, so that was very nice yeah. of them. Um, I do want to learn more about. Yeah, it looks like there was a uh, Drew Bedobi says uh, Panda Global had played a huge part in this as well. And trying to like shut down Smash World Tour. It looks like that's what happened. That is fucking terrible. Yeah. Uh, why though? Probably because they only they want it's, it to be the only game in town. Yeah, it's a competing. That's so. That's it's. Yeah. Panda partnering with Nintendo was such a big deal for the entire community. Yeah. Why would they then? ruin the whole community <laughs> that this is actively ruining the whole community. yeah having multiple tournaments can only help and can only grow and help each other's yeah. tournaments you know yeah. having competing tournaments is a great it's not even competing you're all yeah. helping each other yeah it's it's just it's separate tournaments up. yeah it's a slow build-up it's good to have multiple yeah. tournaments especially for for these uh professional players to have constant things going on over and over again it's not like you're getting paid by the company that makes the fucking game it's yeah. not like they're helping at all so having all of these tournaments is a great thing for these for these people who who just spend their whole lives playing this fucking game I want to know more about why Panda uh, is 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 at fault here. Uh, well, it looks like Nintendo, uh, when when reached off to explain why Nintendo didn't really give a straight answer. I'm going to read Smash World part Tour. of this. It's okay. also in the Medium post. There's a Panda Cup section. Around this time, Panda Cup began heavily recruiting events for their own circuit. The CEO continued to tell organizers we would be getting shut down shortly and also added that any events that participate in the Panda Cup uh, would not be allowed to be on the Smash World Tour. This exclusivity surprised us not only because of our Nintendo conversations regarding coexisting, but also because we were not exclusive and even back in January, we told organizers that they could be on both with zero issues from us. Okay, so it looked like Nintendo was cool with the non-exclusivity, but Panda was not. Right. But also, I don't know how much I buy that. I feel like Nintendo <laughs> might have gone back on their word about it, too. Yeah. Because Nintendo is, has notoriously been shitty here, too. Yeah. It's possible Nintendo told Panda we don't want anything to do with them. Mm-hmm. At first, Panda targeted events that were not on the Smash World Tour, including those who did not join because of the aforementioned warnings. A few of these events had broadcast deals with a popular tournament broadcaster beyond the summit. I know that one. The CEO of Panda wanted broadcasting rights to be included as part of the deal of the events joining the Panda Cup. Most of the events refused to break their contracts, so Panda approached beyond the summit directly to try to get the rights released. Uh, Beyond the Summit had very little motivation to give up their broadcasting rights for free, so they declined to get involved, causing the CEO of Panda to escalate things quickly. Oh, we were told he made a variety of threats to Beyond the Summit, including shutting down their entire Smash operation in 2023 if they did not eventually join Panda Cup. After Beyond the Summit held firm, the CEO of Panda warned that they would get Nintendo directly involved putting broadcasting rights for all tournaments in jeopardy. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. Yeah, I'm gonna link the medium post in the chat right now. Uh, if you are watching this later, you can just go to the Smash World Tour Twitter account, and they have a link to it. Uh, it seems like CEO Panda was in good with Nintendo and was using Nintendo to strike down any competitors yeah. and force their way into it being the only tournament and and get fucking broadcasting rights for free yeah w you, w give them something they're broadcasting yeah. the tournament it's not like they're you know most tournaments just do it on twitch anyway mm. so it's not like you need any exclusive broadcasting rights for that yeah i mean it's their channel. Like, like they need yeah. something from you, especially if you're getting all this money and uh, being in fucking bed with Nintendo yeah. or whatever. If not, then just do it on Panda's Twitch. What's the difference? It's so stupid. All right. Now I'm mad at Panda. <laughs> fuck uh, their controller. Fuck their stupid <laughs> controller. They do have a dock uh -huh. that you can, it's like a thing that makes it so you can play. It's basically the GameCube controller adapter. Right. That you put the switch in and you could, 
play like uh, in, port- in tabletop mode. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. And I never played with it because it's a dock. Right. So I was like, I don't want to talk about that. Um, anyway, I'll read this whole thing later because, oh, you can listen to it. Is that a medium thing? Ooh. That's pretty cool because I don't like reading. <laughs> Reading's for nerds. Reading's for mm-hmm. nerds and idiots. Uh, Table 9 says, yes, Nintendo graciously gave these people a chance when they had been so timid to do so for fear of what happened before. Panda abused their powers to bully every other league to bend to their will. It's crazy because there's been so much controversy in the Smash community. That's part of why Nintendo hasn't wanted to get involved. And now the people they got involved with creating controversy. There you go. Just the... Just a circle of life in a way. Nintendo's never going to get back to this. Yeah. Anyway, uh, who else is here? We got Wicked Spooky with six months. Hey, guys, love the new setup. Thanks. Thank you. Dude. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. What's next? Let's talk about... Wait. Uh, I thought I moved things. You did. You didn't... You Why left... is Callisto Protocol up here? Get that out of here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Let's talk about. Right. Let's get. Let's get deep into Sony, uh, 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 Microsoft, and Sony. So, uh, f- we got more news coming from the never-ending uh, Microsoft acquisition uh, acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Uh, they're going through all the different. This on the web. Oh, be quiet, Siri. I'm not talking that was to you. Very loud. I don't know why. I never. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so there, there are a lot of, uh, bullet points to come out of, uh, this latest, uh, filing, which was with UK regulators and the competition and markets authority. Um, I want to read, I want to read this article in full cause this one to me is like the most interesting. And then I want to read select bullet points from, uh, f- the response okay. of this. Uh, so, The first article, uh, Sony claims that Microsoft's true strategy is to turn PlayStation into Nintendo. Okay, interesting. (laughs) Sony has claimed that Microsoft's true strategy behind the proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard is to have PlayStation become like Nintendo and not compete in the 18-rated shooter space. The comments were made in a newly published response to UK regulator uh, the Competition and Markets Authority's decision to expand its investigation into the proposed acquisition. In its 22-page response, Sony Interactive Entertainment alleges that if the deal were to go through, users would leave PlayStation's ecosystem, Microsoft could raise Xbox prices, and independent developers would be harmed in the fallout. Um, as has been the trend with the regulator regulatory back and forth, much of the document focuses on Call of Duty and the perceived harm Sony claims the Activision Blizzard deal could cause uh, should the flagship franchise be exclusive to Xbox. In one section of the statement, the platform holder singles out comments made by Microsoft that other platforms uh, have proposed without Call of Duty, including Nintendo's... Oh, sorry. Um, other platforms have prospered without Call of Duty, including the Nintendo Switch. Oh In its latest response... Sony says this claim ignores the facts. Uh, SIE argues that Nintendo's strategy is to differentiate from PlayStation and Xbox because it doesn't rely on 18-rated shooter franchises, games which it argues Microsoft will have a virtual exclusive ownership of should the Activision deal uh, be approved by global regulators. In this sense, it alleges Microsoft's true strategy with the uh, Activision Blizzard deal is to make PlayStation like Nintendo and that it does not compete in this space. Uh, quote, Microsoft claims that Nintendo differentiated model demonstrates PlayStation doesn't need Call of Duty to compete effectively, but this reveals Microsoft's true strategy. Uh, Microsoft wants PlayStation to become like Nintendo so that it would be a uh, less close and effective competitor to Xbox. Post-transaction, Xbox would become the one-stop shop for all the best-selling shooter franchises on console, Call of Duty, Halo, Gears of War, Doom, and Overwatch, as the decision explains, and it would then be free from serious competitive pressure. Uh, honestly, pretty good, pretty good strategy. Yeah. It's a pretty good <laughs> idea for them to do that. Uh, 
SIE statement goes on to claim that Activision's games, in particular Call of Duty, are critical to PlayStation. The franchise is firmly entrenched in gamer psyche. Every installment since Call of Duty was first released back in 2000 has consistently topped the charts. Um, it, and it goes on to share redacted percentage of figures of its shares of the audience it believes it would lose uh, to Xbox if COD goes exclusive. Ignoring these facts... Microsoft argues that Nintendo has been successful without access to Call of Duty, which it has. Uh, this misses the point. The decision identifies a wide body of evidence showing that Nintendo offers differentiated experiences to Xbox and PlayStation because it focuses on family-friendly games that are very different from Peggy 18 first-person shooters like Call of Duty. This is supposedly this is supported by Microsoft's internal documents, which, so the CMA found, show that, in general, Microsoft's internal documents track PlayStation more closely than Nintendo, with Nintendo being absent from any internal competitive assets. So, basically, so Sony is deathly afraid of becoming Nintendo. You know, the most successful video game company <laughs> in the world right now. I mean... It makes a little bit of sense. I feel like shooters are way more uh, popular uh, it, with uh, Western audiences. Yes. I feel like Sony is very successful in other avenues. Yes. I mean, of course, Call of Duty and, and all of that stuff is incredibly successful, too. Yes. Um, but uh, they'd be just fine without that. Stuff. Yeah, because, you know, Sony, okay, they may not be the home for first-person shooters, but... They are home to JRPGs. Yeah. They are home to... Uh, regular the, RPGs. Regular <laughs> RPGs. Uh, character action games like The Last of Us and Call and uh, God of War. Third person action games. Third yes. person action games, yes. yes. Uh, things like that. So, I mean, yes, it would suck that if they lost first person shooters. But, you know, I think, you know, being sad that you're going to be like Nintendo is not the right argument in this yeah. sense because what that does is it forces you to foster your own identity beyond what you know is also available on other systems right you know i think if anything it would be a chance for sony to go further with their exclusives and yeah you can become like nintendo for an older audience nintendo is known for their great first party titles and so are you sony it's just your first party titles are marketed to an older audience. Who are they explaining this all to? The Is this uh, a court document? The UK regulatory committee. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so all, all of these articles that I have here are in reference to this uh, 22 page document and uh, the UK, the CMA regulatory committee investigation. So, so, so Microsoft's argument is that. You could just be like Nintendo and and not and be completely be successful regardless of whether or not you have Call of Duty. Correct. And Sony's pushback is, uh, you want us to be like Nintendo so that we won't compete with you. Yeah. Which basically. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I is, mean, is that an argument? Is that an argument that would work about? Because the whole the whole thing is. Taking Call of Duty will remove competition, and that is bad in a mon in capitalism because of monopolies. Correct. So, Sony is trying to prove that Microsoft is creating a monopoly. Yes. Uh, b by taking Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, by taking all of Activision Blizzard, mm -hmm. um, in generally, but Call of Duty specifically, right? Because they really don't seem to give a crap about like. Tony Hawk, or Crash Bandicoot, or Spyro the Dragon, or <laughs> any of the Blizzard shit. It's just Call of Duty is everything. They is should kind up. of care a lot about Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon. Yeah, they should care a little <laughs> yeah. more about those guys. Um, I'm legally, what do they have? They have to prove that uh, it's a monopoly within a niche of video games. Yes. It's not like they're a the monopoly of a video game company there there will be the monopoly of first person shooters yes <laughs> and is that worth is that worth anything to the uk regulatory committee yeah i mean because sony doesn't really have their own first party shooter franchise they would oh what the hell is that game kill zone yeah like that's it and it doesn't seem like they're making any more kill zones 
Uh, I mean, yeah, there are other first person shooters out there, but none of them are Call of Duty as uh, the next article we will get to um, so succinctly uh, points out. Let's let's go. Let's dive I'll just right I'll just read the direct quote from it's from the same filing. Uh, it is about how Sony just basically says Battlefield sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it does. Quote, <laughs> Call of Duty is not replicable. Call of Duty is too entrenched for any rival, no matter how well equipped to catch up. It has been the top selling game for almost every year in the last decade. And in the first person shooter genre, it is overwhelmingly the top selling game. Other publishers do not have the resources or expertise to match its success. Damn. To give a concrete example, Electronic Arts, one of the largest third party developers after Activision, has tried for many years to produce a rival to Call of Duty with its Battlefield series. Despite the similarities between Call of Duty and Battlefield, and despite EA's track record in developing other successful AAA series like FIFA, Mass Effect, and Need for Speed, the Battlefield... And, and they say Star Wars Battlefield. I left that out because I feel like they're reaching with that yes, one. Yes, I, I wanted to put that right back in. All right. Despite uh, their sick track record for developing other successful AAA franchises... The Battlefield franchise cannot keep up. As of August 2021, more than 400 million Call of Duty games have been sold, while Battlefield has only sold just 88 million copies. Just 88. That's still a lot. The Battlefield franchise cannot keep up. They they flat out said, what do you want us to do? Battlefield? Battlefield sucks. <laughs> you, you want You're leaving us with them. <laughs> you want us to drink RC Cola? Fuck you. We want Coca-Cola. That's what they're saying. <laughs> that is exactly what they're saying. It's like, holy shit. How does EA feel about this right now? I need to see a response from like, EA. I, I, but EA has to know. Oh, they know. Because Battlefield, this they've been getting worse. <laughs> they try. Every fucking year to say to me like this is the one. This is the one where we finally kill Call of Duty, and it gets worse every year. They had a chance during the uh, the the very beginning of the PlayStation Four generation. Yeah, but yeah. at the end of PlayStation Three, beginning of PlayStation Four, they had a ch they were actually competing against Call of yeah, Duty. Yeah, Battlefield Three, Battlefield Four, Battlefield One. Even they absolutely royally fucked up the launch of battlefield 4 yeah it didn't work for two whole weeks the, yeah the, the game did not just, just did not work yeah. you could not play the yeah. game for two you buy it and it doesn't, doesn't work, work for two weeks yeah. uh and then it just went all downhill from there and then yeah. they made just just bad games after that yeah it's, um, it's incredible and actually. look call of duty isn't the greatest either no but they've uh at least been decent yeah <laughs> <laughs> they at least work they're playable yeah they work and they're well mostly yeah mostly work and mostly playable uh look i have a lot of problems with call of duty but they are very good games Most, yes almost every time it's it's uh it, it's it's at least mechanically functionally good yeah <laughs> it's like it's like you know uh a toyota camry they're not the greatest cars in the world but they know how to make them and they just work right you, you can rely on it right you know at this point you know battlefield is like you know if i tried to build a car <laughs> You don't want me to build a car, but it is weird to 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 to, to show the competition against Call of Duty because Call of Duty yeah. is so huge; it's an anomaly. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, exactly. Like trying to at least give Battlefield a little bit of credit for, for trying, for trying, yeah. yeah, and and for continuously making games. Yeah. Um, but it is very funny that PlayStation <laughs> PlayStation sounds like they're whining at this point. They're like, really, we have. You, know, you got Call of Duty at home. Like, yeah. really? This is what I have to eat? <laughs> well, it's not just Call of Duty that they're whining about. Oh, no. Because also in the same 22-page uh, document, Sony just says, PlayStation Plus sucks compared to Game Pass. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Quote, Game Pass leads PlayStation Plus significantly. Microsoft already has a substantial lead in multi-game subscription services. Game Pass has 29 million subscribers to Xbox Game Pass uh, console and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and is expected to grow substantially in the future. The multi-game subscription tiers of PlayStation Plus considerably lag behind the numbers of Game Pass. Oh, no. But... It that's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not Xbox's fault. So, so... 
I you tried. Give, <laughs> I want to give them credit. PlayStation Plus Premium, uh, or I'm sorry, PlayStation Plus Extra. Yeah. PlayStation Plus Extra, I think is a better value. It has more games. Yeah. Or, or I guess more games that are worth more high anything. profile games. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's cheaper. Yeah. Even if you get the premium, it's cheaper. Um, the only thing that might make it not so worth it is you get more functionality on Game Pass with the PC aspect. Yeah, and stuff. the PC aspect. And more devices to yeah. play it on and stuff. Yeah. There is no PlayStation Plus premium or extra on phones, on Android right. or anything. Yeah, because so. you need the premium tier for cloud gaming. Right. And it, it's only like a select few games. And also, too... They lock backwards compatibility behind that subscription service. Yeah. If you want to play PS1 games, you have to subscribe to premium. Meanwhile, if you want to play original Xbox games, as long as it's on the list and you still own the disc, Microsoft's like, yeah, I don't care. Go for it. See, that would remove value. <laughs> right. If you're only thinking of playing AAA new releases, right. uh, there's a lot of great value in PlayStation Plus Extra. Yeah. Uh, but if you're... If you want the flexibility, there's nothing that beats Game Pass. Right. And that is entirely your fault, PlayStation. Yeah. You can't be sitting here whining about that. And you know it. Like, we talked about it on the show a while ago where they're like, yeah, uh, game, uh, PS Plus kind of sucks. We're losing subscribers substantially. We're not yeah. putting a lot of money into it. We kind of forgot about it after launch. <laughs> you know, you came out of the gate swinging and then just nothing you didn't follow up on it you're not really adding games to it at like a reasonable pay like you're doing games every month but there's no big hype over it where was this complaining uh during the xbox 360 era or not 360 uh uh playstation 4 era yeah you know they were on top yeah or playstation 2 playstation 2 they were on top playstation mm -hmm. 3 maybe not so much playstation 4 they were on top yes now all of a sudden i mean playstation 5 is still on top, I mean, Ooh. Xbox has caught up significantly. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. They're seeing this thing chasing yeah. after them, and they're like, "I can't fight this off." Uh, well, it's not all Sony complaining about you know Xbox trying to buy Call of Duty. Okay, because Xbox did some complaining because <laughs> according to them, their exclusives suck. Oh my god! <laughs> "Quote: This is in response to Sony's uh, twenty-two page filing." Both Sony and Nintendo's exclusive first-party games rank among the best-selling in Europe and worldwide. Currently, Sony exclusive content includes prominent first-party titles such as The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, and Spider-Man. And in addition to having outright exclusive content, Sony has also entered into arrangements with third-party publishers which require an exclusion of Xbox from a set of platforms these publishers can distribute their games on. So that's interesting there. In addition to having outright exclusive content sony has also en entered into agreements with third-party publishers which require the exclusive exclusion of Ex exclusion of xbox okay yeah that's true we learned about that recently yeah yeah that that, that they will only let you uh uh they're 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 actively paying people not to put their games on, yeah. on xbox i do uh is, now is that a breach of some sort of business law i don't think so to be like you can't we want to pay you not to work with these people i think because it's not even an exclusive like an exclusive is different yeah exclusive is you only work with us this I is feel like, don't work with joe over there yeah i feel like that could very quickly become like an anti-competitive thing yeah like it's it's one thing like if sony were to go to say square enix and be like hey we want you to, you know, we want to work out a deal where Final Fantasy 16 comes to, the, you know, PlayStation early. Can yeah. we work something out? Or like when Microsoft like worked out a deal with Square Enix to get Tomb Raider on Xbox a year early. Mm -hmm. This sounds like it's just like, don't put this on Xbox at all. Yeah, That's uh, where you can get into some trouble because you're withholding a product from basically another customer. Yeah, that's... <laughs> there seems to have been a lot of uh interesting drama going on between yes. Microsoft and PlayStation. A lot of uh strange uh uh, uh big business uh, uh like pettiness. Yeah. 
that's going on here. That all happened this year. Yeah. I mean, that at least all came out this year. I just. I find- also saw some stuff with the uh, Epic uh, and Apple. Yes. Lawsuit. Yeah. Some stuff came out yeah. with that also. I just I I find it so funny that Xbox like it's just admitting at every turn like yeah we don't have exclusives. What do we got? <laughs> we got Halo and Forza. That's about it. They, they might be admitting that they don't really care. <laughs> Like they they're not really interested in the, in 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 that. And then why do then why do they buy like a thousand studios? What is the context? Oh, this is another UK yeah. com, com, competition and markets authority. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. So what are they? I I don't really understand their game plan here. <laughs> like like Microsoft they're, shitting on themselves and Sony shitting on themselves. They're like, both trying to make themselves look like the weaker party. Mm-hmm. So like. For Sony example, they're trying to make themselves look like if Microsoft buys Activision, then that would destroy the PlayStation e- ecosystem completely. Right. Microsoft is trying to make it look like if we don't buy Activision, Sony will destroy the Xbox ecosystem completely. I think that both are true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either is true. I think this is just... I think this is just two of the biggest video game companies in the world, two of the biggest companies in the world, period. Yeah. Trying to throw like the biggest pity party for themselves. Yes. <laughs> be- because like one doesn't want to lose Call of Duty and one wants to own Call of Duty. I think that uh they I I think that Microsoft buying Activision is a huge blow to PlayStation. Yeah, no, without question. But I think that PlayStation is really leading things in in terms of uh like triple a games yeah they're doing a great job right now yeah and they're leading the console race so microsoft's got to do something i feel like no matter what happens they will both figure it out and they will both be fine microsoft does keep saying that uh they keep reiterating like we promise to keep call of duty on playstation for 10 years at minimum so that was another thing i don't know if we talked about that they claimed that they offered playstation yeah uh, call of duty for 10 years and yeah. remember PlayStation said uh, the deal wasn't that. PlayStation, I think the original deal that we heard about was that Sony had claimed that they only offered Call of Duty for three years. So wait, wait. Microsoft said, or I guess Phil Spencer said, we we're honoring the current deal with with PlayStation. Right. And then PlayStation said that's only three years. Yes. That's not good enough. And then now Microsoft's saying ten years. Yes. So what the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Pity party. <laughs> yes. I didn't put it in here because I just found out about it, but I don't and I don't really think this is a big deal. Um apparently in these, you know, filings and stuff, Sony said that they tried to put PS plus on Game Pass with Micros- on Xbox when Microsoft said no. Meanwhile, Xbox countered with well, we tried to put Game Pass on PlayStation, but you said no. Yeah. Like it's it's just it's just a big like, you know, corporate two corporations doing like this. No, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. Yeah. No, you're stupid. Like just back and forth and hoping that one of them pushes the other hard enough that they scrape their knee and have a big cry about it. And then everyone pities the person crying. Why does PlayStation put their stuff on PC? Now? Yeah. I'm curious about that. Because because they seem to be totally against Microsoft. They don't right. want to work with them like at all, even a little bit. Uh, but then here they are putting their stuff on PC. Well, not, not putting... realize that that's Microsoft? Well, they're not putting it on the Xbox Game Store specifically. Right. They're doing it all through Steam. I understand. Which is not, you know, yes, it's compatible with Windows, but, you know, Microsoft doesn't get a cut of that. Mm-hmm. It, you know, Valve gets a cut of right. that. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, but it's just, you need a, you're buying a PC. Right. You, you know, you're playing it on their platform, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Microsoft's seeing some money there. Yeah. It's just uh, weird. Like, you know, people feel like they don't need well, to buy what, a what else? What else are they going to do? Put it on Mac? Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> you play That'd Spider-Man on Mac? It would be. That'd be crazy. It would. <laughs> the, but they're not. That'd be awesome if they were like, <laughs> fuck you, Microsoft. Yeah. Put it all on Mac. And then Mac would be like, hell yeah. yeah. Right, we buy Mac, play games. Because Apple has been trying to champion that they could pl- you could play games on, a, on an Barely. Apple. Barely. They try to say that you can. That yeah. is very powerful. But they have barely any games that show off the power. Allegedly, Resident Evil 8 village mm-hmm. like was supposed to be the big one and like people who were play testing was like it, it's fine <laughs> it doesn't I, run that much better i've than only really played tunic there's, there's not a lot of games that show off the m1 power you know and that honestly is apple's fault yes it is 100 percent apple's fault. yes it is 
anyway, uh, there I, we don't have an article for this, but uh, you saw Elon Musk complaining about how Apple takes thirty percent from developers, like he learned yeah. that all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, "We're gonna expose Apple," and everyone's like, "Epic already did that yeah. two years ago." I was late. I also like how he's. Uh, I tweeted about this. He said, uh, "Oh, Apple's gonna, you know, stop advertising on Twitter." And like right under that was an ad for like the Apple Store Black Friday. I deal. saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's, he said Apple stopped. They dropped all of their stuff, their promotions yeah. on Twitter, and you're like, "No, I'm looking at it. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now." I don't know. I I feel like if this if Elon Musk buy Twitter uh, proves anything, it's that maybe he's not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's kind of an idiot. He got a little fucked. I think he wanted to buy it to like you know like run it and yeah. like and like run it as a utility as a public utility because i do think some social media should be a public utility right and he bought it realized he was gonna lose a lot of money yeah and it wasn't gonna make anything for him tried to back out got fucked and then was like well i guess i got it yeah now. and now he's stuck with it yeah and you know he got, clearly has no idea how to run a social media yeah, company, now he doesn't know what to so do he's gonna yeah. run it into the ground thank you for that yeah i love twitter yeah, me too. Um, I'm, I'm, despite, I'm sad about despite it. the fact that it's a cesspool. When is when are the people who have legitimate check marks? When are they going to lose them? Because they're supposed to pay for Twitter Blue, right? To but, keep the check marks. But they started adding the like the gray official. Oh, that's the new thing. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Well, well, there's that, and now all of a sudden there's going to be they're going to be different colors now. There's yeah. going to be blue for. Uh, Twitter blue, yeah. and then gray for famous people, and then gold for companies. Uh, no, no, gray was for, I don't know. I, there's a government one. I don't know. It used to just be if you had the check mark, it meant you were the person actually doing the tweeting. Yes, that's what it meant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they. I think uh, Sean in the chat saying they reversed the payment plan. So what? Now you can't. Uh, yeah, I think they like they paused it or whatever, like because they're gonna come out with a new verification system. Mm -hmm. And check mark system. You can't like I can't apply for for verification right. anymore. I can't. I can't. Uh... So what? I have to pay fucking eight dollars a month and then have the thing in my bio that says I have it because I'm a Twitter Blue member. Yep. Yep. There you go. That's what you got to do. Bob. I would pay one dollar a month if I could have the legit one and get it <laughs> legitimately. Right. But if but, I have to pay eight dollars a month, and I get the fake one, fuck right off. Yeah, you know, that's that's my that that's my proposal. <laughs> <laughs> Little old me. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it for for Microsoft and Sony's uh, little back and forth for now. For now. This is not over, and I guess will we'll no. continue to happen for a long period. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe one day my boss will be able to play all the Call of Duties on Game Pass, because that's what he keeps asking me about. <laughs> I just keep telling him, y'all, the government hasn't approved it yet. True. Okay. Uh, Tetris Grandmaster. Somebody told me about this the other yes, day. Yes. This is allegedly the hardest Tetris game ever, and it's coming to Switch and PS4. Okay. Not Xbox, apparently. Why don't you put that in your fucking court documents? <laughs> the famously tough arcade version of Tetris is being ported to consoles for the first time since it's released in 1998. Oh, this is an, a game that existed already? Yes. Uh, publisher Hamster Corporation will release Akira's Tetris the Grandmaster for PS4 and Nintendo Switch on December 1st. Uh, the Grandmaster is known for its fearsomely rapid increase in drop speed. It was the first Tetris game to go all the way up uh, to instant gravity which means new Tetraminos don't fall, but appear instantly at the bottom of the screen. And players have only a fraction of a second to move and rotate them before they lock into place with uh, and another appears. The game gets its title from its ranking system, which grades players on its ability uh, through nine ranks all the way up to Grandmaster. Grandmaster had a few sequels, including a spin-off game, Tetris the Grandmaster Ace, which didn't make it out to Xbox 360 as a launch uh, title for the console's Japanese release, but this will be the, the first home release for the original game. Look at this. <laughs> oh, I don't like that you at get all. No time. I don't like that at all, man. They just appear at the bottom. Yeah. That's crazy. 
Uh, yeah, Grandmaster's reputation has made it a staple of the world's top Tetris players and showcases such as games done quick, awesome games done quick. <coughs> Check out this video if you want to get a uh, sense of the blistering fat, how blistering fast it is. Hamster's re-releasing uh, Tetris the Grandmaster as part of its huge arcade archives collection. Oh, okay. Yeah. It has only been confirmed for Japan so far, but most arcade archive releases have appeared on Western storefronts too. The Specialist Publisher has been reissuing retro arcade games on a weekly basis on the Switch since uh, 2017. Weekly? I guess. There are a lot of them on there. Grandmaster is part of a doubleheader celebrating the fact that Hamster has made no less than 300 classic games available. Um, the other game being the 1979 classic Galaxian. The arcade archives ports are kind of bad. At least they were before. Uh, I haven't played them in a very long time. They're, they're very like hit and miss. Like some of them will be good and some of them will be jank. And right. that's unfortunate if that's your whole shtick is re-releasing arcade games. It's like you want it to be good every single time. Right. Uh, I'm trying to see now from the eShop uh, arcade archives games. Uh, yeah. Let's do platform. and Oh, they're all Nintendo. 228! Yeah. Holy hell. That's a lot. That's a lot of games. So I'm less excited now that I know it's an arcade archives game. <laughs> I, I I didn't know it was an. I heard about this. Uh, somebody said that they were releasing the hardest Tetris game, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds really cool to, mm -hmm. to have a new Tetris game that's like super hard." But it's an old game, and uh, it's an arcade archives port. So yeah, so I'm, it's, I'm less excited. It's skeptical. About it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll try it, but I probably yeah. won't love it because because that looks hard as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh let's we have some notifications that i missed from okay. before they were responding to us mega dragon with 100 bits says can we comment on how they gave peach her biker outfit in the super mario movie trailer do you mean the helmet and she was she was like in um she was on like the motorcycle yes type deal yes during mario kart but also she looked like a she had when she picked up the axe she had some sort of different outfit yeah. also like she was ready for battle or something yeah this is all to make up for that Super Princess Peach game on the DS where her you know, powers are based on her emotions, like crying. That's all that I thought about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dark Type with 100 bits says, Sony can have their shooters, but Sony's strong arms are their exclusives. God of War, Horizon, Last of Us, Spider-Man. Sony ain't going to lose money because they don't have COD. Nintendo has proved this again and again because of one thing, exclusives. I feel like you could make the same case with Pokemon or Mario Kart because of how well they sell. You're right. I don't think that there is any one thing that's going to make or break any of these big three game companies. Yeah. I think that um, they will have something. If Like if Sony loses Call of Duty and loses that much money because they don't have Call of Duty, they will have something else yeah. that will make it work for them. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it has to be. It's not going to be one game that causes a studio uh, a system to fall. It's going to be like a lot of little things that add up and pile up and then just collapse. You know, Xbox almost folded last generation after the Xbox One. Yeah, they were not doing well. It was only through a change in leadership with Phil Spencer becoming the head of Xbox. And Satya Nadella becoming the head of Microsoft and then having a long talk about what the future of Xbox could be. Did they decide that it's worth keeping around and try to reconfigure what it means to play games on Xbox? Yeah, and uh, same thing happened with Nintendo. They almost didn't make it out of the Wii U era. Yeah. They were going to give up. Yeah. Uh, if the Switch didn't work out, and it did. So uh, I don't know what Sony's problems were. I'm sure that they've had some struggles too. I don't know if there's been a time when they almost gave up well their biggest struggle was at the launch of the ps3 but like halfway through that generation they rebound they rebounded considerably yeah they're you know they sold just as much as the xbox 360 did they had you know all the exclusives that we love from that from sony debuted on playstation 3 so so, so what's really happening here is that they're big crybabies who have never had a problem before yes because <laughs> the playstation 3 was a big problem here in america yeah but worldwide yeah it wasn't really that big of a and, problem. you know like i said it eventually found its momentum and got back up in america yeah so i i mean it's, it's just 
whining because they're they're sitting from their place of privilege. Yeah. They've never had fucking their struggles. In yeah. Business, you know. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, close to protocol. What up? What what up? Apparently, this game is coming out real soon. I had no idea. But um, yeah, out next month on console and PC is a horror game that looks and plays a lot like uh, Dead Space, because it basically is. Uh, and like Dead Space, Callisto Protocol will feature some gnarly looking deaths, both for you when you screw up and bite it, or for your alien foes when you slaughter them. But some of these uh, deaths, death animations, will be locked behind the game's season pass, according to new details spotted on the game's Steam store page. In the year of our Lord, 2022... Uh, nearly every big and small game release includes some sort of mix of DLC, paid expansion, and season pass. Uh, this is just how things work these days. Uh, it's been like this for so long that most of us barely recognize just how much of, uh, how much shit publishers are trying to sell us beyond the actual game. But then a company sticks death animations behind a paywall. It's a good reminder of just how silly and greedy the games industry can be some days. Case in point, yeah, apparently death animations and Callisto Protocol are only available to players who buy the season pass. As spotted by VGC over on the Horror Games Steam page, uh, you can find updated details about uh, what you get when you buy the various versions of the game and its season pass. According to the details listed on Steam, 25 different death animations are being sold via two different DLC packs. 13 of these animations are for the main character of Jacob, while the other 12 are for additional enemy death animations. Uh, the season pass includes uh, the season pass is included with the D digital deluxe edition, which costs $80 on PC. The base game is 60. So I don't know how much this bothers me because like uh Oh, this bothers me. This is the, this is like one of the grossest examples of a season pass. <laughs> So I think a season pass for a single player game is a little stupid. Yeah. Unless you're getting you got pro, which was mag uh, safe not working out for you. I don't know. I desperately need a you new got tape laptop. on it and stuff. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. I think the the surgru is like too heavy and it just keeps falling out. But oh, I have surgru. Surgru. Yeah. Uh, and I have to keep it plugged in because the battery is like borked. What year is that? 2015. Do you want a 2016? No, I want <laughs> that one. And okay. I'm like saving my pennies. Good luck. Thanks. I have a 2016 that's sitting in a box upstairs. Oh, I'm, I'm late 2016. I'm gonna wait for. Uh, okay. Yeah. This this ba I'm gonna ride this bitch out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think having a season pass for a single player game is a little stupid unless there's gonna be like a lot of DLC. Like yeah. for example, like well that's not a single player game. Like, remember the days of the Xbox 360 mm -hmm. where like a game like Call of Duty would come out. And then three months later, there would be map packs that you'd have to buy. Yes. You know, and then like a season pass, that's the only case where I think a season pass makes sense. Well, I think like you look at Breath of the Wild that had two different DLCs mm -hmm. and you bought a season pass to, to make sure you got both of them rather than just the one. Right. I, I think like you said, if a, if a single player's game is going to have, you know, significant DLC, like extra levels, extra mode, right. not just skins and death animations, yeah. then yeah, season pass makes sense. At least, I'm just saying though, <coughs> death animations, that's a cosmetic thing. Who really cares? It's something that used to be in games for free. Mm -hmm. Or included in the yeah. $60. They are, they are... Also, $60 is pretty cheap. Now that I think for the base it. game. Yeah, it should be yeah. seven. Yeah, it's it's you know death animations are what makes the like especially games like Callisto Protocol and Dead Space like those are fun. You look forward to seeing them. They're unique. They're wacky and gruesome and you know, but they're they're a spectacle. Basically, what you're saying is you don't get to be a part of this spectacle unless you give us more money. Yeah. You don't get to, you don't get the full game unless you give us more money. Well, you're getting a lot of them already. You know? How much are you getting? I don't Because it's, it's a very real possibility that you're only getting one death animation. <laughs> Look, games are very expensive to make. Mm -hmm. And they're very cheap to buy. And if something's got to be behind a paywall, or, or if they're going to not make something, and they're going to hold back some death animations, like, I'm good. I don't need them. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. I fi I feel like this is this is harkening back to the 360 and PS3 era. Uh, era the Project Ten Dollars, where single player games would have 
extra content locked off if you bought the game used. Yeah. Like Arkham City, you couldn't play as Catwoman if you bought it used. Rage, you couldn't access the sewer levels if you bought it used. Yeah. You know, shit like that. The Saboteur, you couldn't watch this. You couldn't see the naked boobies if you now bought it that, used. Now that like that is what prevented people from buying that game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like all, all this crap that like doesn't have to be there, but you're doing it anyway because you think it's a good way to squeeze just a little bit more out of your customers by yeah. giving them FOMO. Yeah. And I, that's, that's, I think is dickish. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I'm just uh, in, in these days, if it's a cosmetic thing, I'm really not upset about it. Unless it's something like, you know, star Wars, like imagine it's like a lightsaber color, like green. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or all of Darth Vader. Yeah. Like, like that's like <laughs> yeah, a problem. When, yeah. When like, if you wanted to play as Darth Vader, you had to like pay 20 bucks or spend 10,000 hours in the game. Yeah. Or whatever that's shit. Yeah. Absolutely absurd. Should we put a big plant back here? I think there should be a big plant. Yeah. You should dig up like, like little trinkets or something like live in this place up. I have an idea for, uh, I have some, remember when we were at Long Island Retro, we got yeah. those, uh, uh, old uh magazine uh ads yes i want to get like light frames for them and put them there you go like go yeah. behind you and stuff are you going to their festival that they're doing next week it's next week yeah that's december 10th maybe okay hey i'm on long island now <laughs> i could just go to it yeah i don't have to think about it sure whatever i'll, I'll go to that <laughs> screw it all right uh, so what is that exactly? That's just like a flea market kind of thing? Yeah, basically. A lot of the I mean, same... That's kind of what Long Island Retro was. Yeah, it's a lot of the same vendors from there too, but... Okay, I'll do it. Fuck it. Something to do on a Saturday? There Actually, wait. Next Saturday. December 10th, yeah. Yeah, I should be able to do All that. right. Cool, dude. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much to uh, Zelda Remedy for the subscription. I appreciate it. Uh, all right. Uh, next news we have future DC games will link to movies yes uh, DC studio co-CEO James Gunn has confirmed oh, that yeah. a new DC film universe will be a link to future games that exist in the same canon as reported by Eurogamer Gunn sat, was asked via Twitter um, if the DCEU which now seems to be rebranded as just the DCU um, will incorporate more forms of entertainment down the line to which he replied yes most definitely the DCU will be connected across film and TV and animation, he added. And when another fan asked if there were plans for games to be connected to the DCU as well, Gunn replied plainly, yes. <laughs> Nothing else was said, but it does confirm a trend away from Marvel's strategy of building a shared universe across its films and a separate one across its games. We do know that Gunn and co-CEO Peter Safran uh, begun work on an 8-10 to 10 year plan for DC films, TV Shows animation and more, however, meaning we'll likely see a game or two materialize in this time too. The upcoming Suicide Squad Kill the D Justice League won't be part of this same universe, however, as Rocksteady Studios has already confirmed it's part of the Arkham world that includes the Arkham Asylum games. Uh, this says Gotham Knights. It does not include Gotham Knights. Yeah, why would it? It's very confusing because, you know, you know, Arkham Arkham Knight it ends with Batman dying. And, yeah. you know, the, what the next generation is going to be. And then Gotham Knights starts with Batman dying mm -hmm. and what the next generation that's is going to be. That's super annoying because those two, that's, those are two games that are clearly, like, named to seem like they're in the same universe. Yeah. So, so you will buy it thinking, but, like, if I like this game, I will like this game. It's to piggyback off of the success of that game. Yeah. But then they're saying they're different universes. Yeah. And also the stories are similar, but they're not. Yeah. That's super annoying. Yeah, it's. But how could you then? Now you have now now you're gonna have movies to tie these games. That, like the movies are gonna give a shit what the games are doing. Like I don't buy well, that for a well, second. Well, God, I hate talking about Star Wars on the internet. But <laughs> look at what is currently happening with uh, the Star Wars games. Right. Those are canonical with the current I, Disney era. They are doing a fantastic job. Like, I will say. I think if you have a dedicated team, a dedicated story team to like look over and like keep track of everything, 
you can make it work. Yeah. And I think, you know, they have two people who know what they're doing and respect the material enough to want to make this work. But the thing with comics is they're so wacky and there's a billion stories well, that all clash with each other. And having the freedom to do... Because video games are 20 to 40 hour stories. Yeah. So like having the freedom to do whatever you want within those 20 hours is I think very important. And, I, and being constrained to what's not going to ruin the movies yeah. might be I, a problem. I agree with you. I think that there's nothing wrong with keeping things separate. Like the, the Wonder Woman game that Monolith is working on. Mm-hmm. Does this mean now they're going to replace whoever is playing Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot, like they're just going to redo the character model to be her and it's going to tie into whatever Wonder Woman 3 is going to be. Right. I don't want that. I want what they were originally going to do because I want something different yeah. from the movies. That's the whole point of, you know, that's the great thing about superheroes is that everyone uh, tells their story differently. Yeah. So the comic book version will be similar but different from the video game version, similar but different from the movie version, so forth and so on. I wouldn't mind having a game or two that ties in with a movie. Yeah. But having, you know, having like a like a like a set of rules, yeah, to, to make it tie into the movies is probably going to be a problem. Yeah. I definitely don't want to see a Batman game in the universe of the the Batman, yeah. you know, or a or I don't want a Joker oh, that's God, yeah. in the <laughs> movie canon. Like I don't want that, yeah. you know. I want a game of yeah. version of that. So, uh I am very happy that James Gunn is taking over this yes. sort of role because yes. they desperately need something like that. Because yeah, and it kind of got all over the place. Yeah, and I think they finally have a guy who, you know, likes the source material, understands the source material, respects the source material, um, and like, like knows how to make it work in a in a cinematic form. Right. Like we've seen his work. Like we know what he can do. He understands the assignment. It so. it seems to be going really well for Marvel to have a guy yeah. who does everything, and it seems to be working really well for for uh, uh, Star Wars. Yes, to have that sort of oversight, right? Because you have a lot of stories going on, a lot of gears turning, yeah. and, and you know, and, and D- DC has two. They have James Gunn and Peter Safran, um, both of whom like uh, are very well respected. So hopefully this. But this does lead, like not to talk about like the DC movies and stuff. This leads a lot of questions because now Henry Cavill's back as Superman. Right. Ben Affleck filmed the cameo for Aquaman. What does this mean for like all the weird stuff like uh, Matt Reeves the Batman? Because that's a separate thing. Yeah. Uh, what does this mean for like Joker? Because that's a separate thing. And, like all these separate things that were not connected to like the original universe that Zack Snyder created. Yeah, I don't know because they seem to be like. Kind of bringing that back, but hopefully in a better way. <laughs> I've been wanting them to retcon everything. Just, just get I know. rid of everything. I like, I like. The problem the- is, I like the Batman too much. Yeah, <laughs> I think that they were going down that route where they were like less concerned about connectivity and more just yeah. like do whatever the fuck you want. But now they're back on the connectivity horse, and I don't think that's necessarily the right move. I, I wouldn't mind them rolling with the Batman and then slowly <laughs> adding stuff. Yeah, but. uh I don't want another The Joker. They're doing that. Apparently. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah, I don't I think want it was that. was fine the way it was. Yeah. Just leave it at that. Um, I wouldn't mind Henry Cavill still being Superman. He was great. Yeah, he's fine. He was yeah. not the problem with those movies. But you need to reboot it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, the Man of Steel wasn't re- Was that really an origin? Yeah, I guess yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was an origin. Anyway. Uh, last news. Yes. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah, get, get prepared for this one. This one's it. You gotta be ready for this one. This I've been o- like, I've had like, you know, phlegm in my throat since Thanksgiving. It's just been like infuriating. There was the stuff. There. Every time I try Stuck to talk, it just up. like builds up and like, I like hack it out. I want to note that this article was posted at one in the morning. <laughs> uh, news happens fast, Bob. Days Sex Go and other Square Enix mobile games are shutting down within less than a couple of months. You will no longer be able to access Deus Ex Go, the turn-based puzzle game entry in the cyberpunk dystopian franchise. Deus Ex Go was developed by Square Enix Montreal, which was acquired by the Swedish game company Embracer Group back in May. When Embracer rebranded the studio as Ono... I forgot how to pronounce this. Onoma... 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 Is this, French? Is this a French thing? No. 
Oh, we have Montreal. Ah. Onoma uh-huh. was the studio rebranded uh, to Onoma back in October. Reports came out less than a month later that it was going to shut down the mobile games developer. Now, Onoma has announced on Twitter that Deus Ex Go, uh, Arena Battle Champions, Hitman Snipers, The Shadow, and Space Invader uh, Hidden Heroes will no longer be accessible after January 4th of 2023. Further, they will remove... They will be removed from the Google Play and Apple App Stores on December 1st, and you can only play them until their final day if you already have access to if you already have them on your device. That's insane. If you fire up any of those games, you will find that in-game purchases are no longer available as well. You also won't be getting any refunds if you don't use any in-game purchases you still have before the game shut down. Uh that the then Square Enix Studio. The then Square Enix Montreal studio released Deus Ex Go back in 2016 to play. You have you have to move series protagonist Adam Jensen between the nodes on a hexagonal grid and have him hack computers and devices uh, or activate his augments. Uh, yeah, it's a strategy game. And, it's a strategy. And, and, yeah, and Square Enix has had some pretty good mobile games. Yeah, the the whole Go series, Hitman Go, Lara Croft Go, and Deus Ex Go were fantastic. Was that Go series all this developer? Yeah, well, Square Enix Montreal. Or like, now on uh, Onoma. I'd like to pro, uh, 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 I'd like to specify that uh, this tweet from Onoma Studios mm-hmm. that explained all this has uh, almost more quote tweets than it has likes. <laughs> uh, so it probably got ratioed a billion times. Yeah, because um, they're basically they're they're PTing these games. Uh, Hunts Vegas says, imagine buying a game and then they take it away. Imagine that? Yeah. That would suck. Yeah. And this is why physical games will always be superior to digital games. Well, that's another that's whole true, conversation yeah. we're going to have to talk about. Uh, welcome to the future, somebody said. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, somebody in the chat also said, oh, uh, Squid Vorb said, can you just sideload them? I mean, probably, probably. if you're an Android guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's like an official way to sideload stuff, but yeah, if you get the APK, you can just do whatever you yeah. want. With it. Uh, if people who want to play it will find a way to play it, but it it's just ridiculous. Yeah, like it's... like what's the purpose? Yeah, like how much is it really costing them to have Deus Ex Go on the store? Like seriously, like do, do they have to release a new version when there's new versions of Android and and iOS? Is that? I mean, I mean, I would imagine so, because that would be a reason. I did see somewhere that Apple does require like updates periodically for their for apps on their App Store. Otherwise, they run the risk of being delisted. Right. Um. But even still, like how how much work could it possibly be? Deus Ex Go was like the biggest one out of these games out of these games that they're being that they're taking down too oh wait yeah there was a big thing with square enix like like square enix yes they they sold off a lot of their west uh crystal dynamics square enix montreal idos they sold them off to embracer group so that's why they renamed it to onoma yeah and that's why they're shutting all this down they're probably going to work on other stuff they're probably completely changing the scope of their company i also have you know because i have all three go games on my phone Mm -hmm. and as of right now Deus Ex Go is the only one that has Onoma as the title sc- on the boot up screen. Lara Croft and Hitman all say Square Enix still. And Deus Ex is going. Yeah. So the one that they updated is the one that they're going to shut down. <laughs> Interesting. But, okay, so we're keeping Lara Croft Go. We're keeping Lara Croft and Hitman Go, yes. Okay. What was the uh, uh, John Wick game? Was that them? John Wick Hex. No, that was, that was uh, somebody else. Thomas was alone developer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was them. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, that sucks. That sucks yeah. that, that that we're just losing games, especially on on a phone. Yeah, like, like you don't really hear about that too. Well, much. you don't really hear about it because it happens so often. <laughs> Like not also even... not a lot of people care about mobile games. No, but like there are a lot of really good mobile games that like just don't exist anymore because nobody gives a shit. Like they'll just like shut them down, mm-hmm. no questions asked. All right, well that's all the news we have. Yeah, uh, there you go. Maybe I'll be home at a decent hour again. Maybe, or maybe it's time for. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This is. 
This one uh, is a video. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I'm going to play this, but uh, maybe I'll just blast it into the microphone. Uh, <laughs> this is Dexerto, but they just ripped it from somebody's TikTok. It's a, so it's a tweet uh, from a TikTok. Yes. The TikTok is Shred, Shreddy Mercury. Uh, so I don't know how much you're going to get this, but, uh, it's, this is a call of duty gameplay. I'll just, I'll just right. let it speak for itself. I'll try to put the speaker up. Are you sure about that? Yo, bro, your teammate just fucking lied to you so hard that I was one shot. He did not hit one bullet. I just want you to know that. All right, so the new Call of Duty has proximity chat. Okay. So if you're talking to your team in game, the people you're playing against will hear you talking to your team. Oh. So a thing that happens in Call of Duty when you see a guy and you get downed, mm -hmm. if you shoot the other guy a lot, you can yeah. tell your team, he's one shot. Hurry up, get him. He's, he's not going to hurt you because you could kill him really quick. Yeah. Uh, and people just say that. Like, he's one shot, yeah, he's one yeah. shot. Like, come help me, quick. Uh, so this guy fucking straight up lied and was like, he's one <laughs> shot. He missed every bullet and was yeah. like, he's one shot. So then the other guy came and this guy killed the other guy and told him in proximity, right. to him, hey man, just so you know, your friend fucking lied to you. <laughs> okay. I was not one shot at all. I gotcha, I gotcha. There's a little little depth to this. To this I gotcha. <laughs> to layers, this it's week. got layers. <laughs> anyway, uh, another thank you to Mackenzie for the five months and CJ Gabriel for the 23 months. Whatever happened to Joey Garbanzo Beans? Was that a guy's name? That was a guy's that name was in a guy, chat, wasn't yes. it? I don't know. Are you still around, Joey Garbanzo yes, Beans? We want to make sure know. that you're okay. <laughs> or leave a comment over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfman Podcast. Speaking of which, yes, we got to answer some, uh, some comments. I think he was a commenter. I don't I think, think so. he was a I don't think he was a uh yeah. a chatter. Uh but in the chat, Woogie Water says, Hey Bob and Will, did you catch the new Rick and Morty? A couple chuckles brought Bob to mind. Oh god. Oh why? god. I haven't seen Rick and Morty in years. I I was so stoked for Rick and Morty when it was coming out. Yeah. Because I liked uh Back to the Future. Yeah. And I thought the humor was good having like the improv like yeah. cartoon stuff. Uh, and then I watched two episodes and nothing ever again. Yeah. And I loved it. I loved the two episodes that I watched, but I'm just really bad. I at was catching stuff. like a clip here and there, and then I'm just like, I can't keep up with this mm -hmm. shit. Uh, all right. How do I read the comments? <laughs> <laughs> Discord. I know. I forget how I. I think I have to. Oh, I know. Okay, I got it. Okay. I I got it. I have I have separate accounts. Oh, uh, because okay, so a little behind the scenes here <laughs> to show what's happening on screen. I am discorded into this other computer, right? That's showing what's on my laptop right here. So I have, I have it's it's very complicated. Yes, setup here. This multi billion dollar setup we have going on here. <laughs> anyway, uh, from last week's Wolf Den podcast. We have Low Life Exec. What did we talk about? Oh, Black Friday. Days. Yes. Low Life Exec said, when I was at Best Buy last week, I saw the digital game table. I played with it and saw what was available on it. And oh my God, they have so much. Dude, I'm telling you, the thing is amazing. When my boyfriend and I get our own place, we are getting that thing for sure. We will have it in our living room and it will be my pride and joy. There you go. Digital game table. I think I know what they're talking about. Did we, did we looked at it and I think I said that looks like, oh, there it is. Oh, the one up arcade. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's, it's $900. Oof. <clears throat> What's the, what is it going to say what game we have? Oh, it's got board games. Yeah. I remember. Oh, I was like, fuck yeah, this yeah. thing. It's got <laughs> board games. Hey man, do not underestimate how big board games are. No, I get it. People like board games. Yeah. I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah, we're not I nerds. I want video games. Because we're cool kids. <laughs> here's, 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 here's the reviews on 1UP Arcade website. Very good. Fun. Cool. Love it. I love it. My favor. Nice. Okay. I love it. My favor. <laughs> they're, uh, they're a different breed, the board gamers. <laughs> I'm digging this. Neat. <laughs> fucking 
fraudulent one-up arcade reviews. Uh, Can I see the games that are on it? Give me a list of games. I don't want to sign up for your newsletter. Is it Clue? Can I play Clue on it? I genuinely enjoy Clue. It has Wi-Fi and online connectivity. Okay. It looks like board games. Connect 4, Life, I think it looks there like. You go. Sorry. Operation. Okay, there are, okay. It has Monopoly. There are a lot of oh, board so games. Oh, they, so they have the, the, the mainstream games. They don't have any of the cool games like uh, Cthulhu's Nightmare or Operation on the Orient Express or, you know, Diver Down or, uh, you know, I'm making all of these up, by the way. I, but thought, just, I, but... I was like, is that the one? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this. They have chess. Oh, wow. So you know they're serious. Anyway, Banana Bear Games says, talking about magic in books, you guys should read, uh, should really read Mistborn then. It's magic, but it has rules. They eat metal beads and use different metals to give them different powers. I will not be doing that, but... <laughs> I don't like that. That <laughs> sounds stupid as hell. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I mean... <laughs> It sounds weird reading a one sentence summary of it, but like adding rules to magic and like yes. making it so you, you can only use magic if you have a special potion like yeah. that, like I can, I can get behind that. Like that, that makes sense. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah. But, but eating a metal. <laughs> That's a little wacky. Ability yeah. is weird and wacky. Yeah. Uh, Stristix Burke says, I do enjoy you guys doing this passive window shopping for me. Premium background noise for work or chores. Appreciate you and the things you do. Thank, Thank you, you, Strix Burke. That sounded like a fake one-up arcade review. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it. Mega Dragon 101 says, Will, I don't understand what the fuck is going on in movie five. Me, Order of the Phoenix is about the aftermath of Voldemort uh, re 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 revival where the Ministry of Magic is trying to make people think Dumbledore doesn't know what the heck he's talking about and that he's just a grumpy old man with Dumbledore trying to build an army to fight the Dark Lord while having to keep distance with Harry in fear of Voldemort hearing, hearing him in. Okay. I get Order of the Phoenix is the longest of the Harry Potter books, but that doesn't mean it isn't a complicated story to follow. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Honestly, in my opinion, you don't have to read any of the books to understand any of the Harry Potter movies. It, Just because you understand it doesn't mean it's not complicated. Yeah. I, it's the longest of the Harry Potter books. Oh, okay, sure, I'll, I'll believe you. But I think it's the shortest of the movies. So they leave a lot out. They leave a lot of shit out, a lot of shit that was important, that like would have made a much better movie, that would have made much more sense. And I didn't see, I didn't, I wasn't following you from when you said Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know what to tell you. It's complicated. Yeah. It's and and you know what you know what I think we didn't talk about another one of my biggest problems with magic. Is that everything's fucking made up and they talk about things that happened like you're supposed to know. Yeah. But they and they sound really like like floral and complicated, but it's just like window dressing like it's supposed to yeah. be. And they do that in Star Wars, too. They do. But in Star Wars, for some reason, I'm like, ooh, what was the old Republic? Yeah. I need to now go to Wikipedia. Well, because when they do it in fucking Harry Potter, I'm like, I can't I don't care. Either show it or get out of here. Well, because in Star Wars, they do it like, right. There's like a one sentence explanation of what happens. And then like other people go out and like explain it. In Harry Potter, in the books at least, that's like pages upon pages upon pages of like exposition. And then like in the movies, it's like they they just ignore it and go on. Or they like they do the Fantastic Beast series to explain it, and nobody fucking likes the Fantastic Beast movies. Well, I mean, like when they're like many Bothans died to bring us this information. Like, what's a Bothan? Now yeah. I need to know that. Well, am I supposed to know what that word means? Yeah. And they do that in like magical stuff. Yeah. And especially Harry Potter, and I'm like. I don't know. I'm <laughs> lost. But in Star Wars, I'm cool with it. And yeah. I understand. I'm like, that's probably an alien race that I'm not supposed to know about. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Hi, guys. Hey. How hey, are you guys how you doing? doing? Uh, we're not Harry Potter guys. Not Harry Potter. I, I feel bad because like, I did like Harry Potter. I did like the Harry Potter movies up until that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just soured me on the entire experience. My problem is that I was always dragged to it 
Yes. <laughs> by a girlfriend at I re- the time. I remember, I think you wound up seeing the second movie like four times because like, like different <laughs> friends wanted to see it. And you kept going. And I kept going, fuck. Yeah. Why am I watching this? <laughs> I saw Fantastic Beasts with work people. Really? The first Fantastic Beast when that came out. Yeah. I don't know why. And I was like, okay, that was fine. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was going on then either. Yeah. Anyway, hi, I'm in the chat. Welcome. Hey. Everybody say some things that are interesting that'll get us uh, t- uh, pro- provoked to to talk yeah. about stuff. Uh, somebody said hello to us. Where was it? It is uh, the the Konami man says it's Cluedo, Will. Oh, in uh, maybe in other parts of the world, but here in America, it's Clue. Are you, it, Cluedo sounds like the copyright free version. Of it. <laughs> no, it is in, in, in Europe. It's called Cluedo. Interesting. Yeah, I like what you've done with the studio. Thanks. It's still a work in progress, but we did a lot. There's a, I drilled the lights into the walls, so they're not on. <laughs> they're not standing yes. anymore. They are up there, and they are not moving. <laughs> I, I I made an error though. This wall, I wanted to put like the rolling like film like like the like the backdrop yeah like so that you can roll like paper down and i put the light up so now you can't ah <laughs> you can't put the that shit on there anymore uh i put up soundproof you see the soundproof i did i noticed that uh this is also some sound like this that. is just uh, uh cosmetic though because the wall is soundproof already wow there you go uh i also took the door off there's a door <laughs> literally right here that's why the shot's so tight uh yeah, i took the door off because you can't get it you know can't open it the only other thing is we, we're waiting on a uh, a thrill house is in the chat. He's making us a nice little center console thing oh. for the mics. The only pro- uh, thrill house, I think that one's wide, which is good because when we put two like mic things on here, they hit each yeah. other. The back of them hit each other, which is a problem. Although the way you have yours now, I feel like a second one wouldn't hit. Maybe. I need a. We need to mess with that. Effort. Yeah. Um. Bob, PS Plus Premium is the best deal with all of the two-hour game trials they keep adding more and more mm. to. I regularly only play two hours of a game, so now I have I save some money. That is a good feature that they don't advertise enough. True. Because I think I do I do firmly believe that all games should have demos because those are a much more effective um preview of a game than a trailer. Right. Um, so that is something I feel like they need to prioritize in their marketing of PlayStation plus. Right. And maybe like roll out a, a kind of feature like that in the regular PlayStation plus or even free because I think people should have access to a demo of a game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love when there's a demo on the eShop or something because I frequently just want to try it before I, 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 I play it. So Two-hour game trial is great. Yeah. That being said, I want to cancel my subscription because I never fucking use it. <laughs> uh, it used to be required that all Xbox Live Arcade games on the Xbox 360, every single one, had to include a demo of some kind. And then on the crazy. Xbox One, they got rid of that. It is very uh, annoying as a developer to have Yeah. To oh, yeah. That. No, and I know all the reasons why they don't. Because you're basically putting more time to create an extra level yeah. for a game. And, like, what if the demo is bad but the game is good yeah you know that that can skew sales and stuff yeah yacht club has a strict policy of no demos which is interesting which is interesting because the mean of the hollower demo Mm -hmm. that i played that was only for press yeah is awesome yeah and i think everybody should get to try that yeah um but it did have bugs so like i guess like you know like they're not convinced the general public won't uh, uh, had issues with the bugs. Uh, also, can you say my name, my screen name, when reading my message? So when I play the podcast in the car, my with my wife, she will know how fucking cool I am. Flow seven nine seven. Okay, sorry, I didn't read that. Yeah. Um, Thrillhouse says uh, the new little mic stand we're getting is twenty two inches wide. Okay, which is significantly bigger than this. Yeah, like twice the size. <laughs> so we're gonna be further apart. Okay. Um. Anyway, I like how it looks like you are in the same room. Very good special effects. Watch this. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. (laughs) My hand just passed through yours. (laughs) 
I remember when free demos were incentives to buy other games like Zone of Enders and Metal Gear that's Solid true. 2, says the Konami man. Yes, that's true. Who, who mentioned Konami yeah. games. The Zone of the Enders came with a demo for Metal Gear Solid 2. Yes. Uh, it was basically the entire tanker section. And that sold copies of Zone of the Enders. Yeah. And that game is not a good game. No. I tried playing it because I like Kojima so much. It's not good. Apparently the second one is... A, completely different, and B, much better. I don't think... I think I tried, and it yeah. wasn't good. Warzone 2 has yet to fill the hole in my heart from this breakup. Alas, I will keep trying. Sorry, Luabic. Yeah. I think it was... I, Luabic and somebody else in the chat uh, was complaining that their girlfriend broke up with them, and they were like, uh, it's nice t- to be here to take my mind off of the breakup. Yeah. And then Hannah came down. She's like, I got cookies. And then she's like, hanging out. I'm like, wow. And they were like, oh no. Oh man. I will say I've been playing Warzone 2. I'm fucking horrible at it all yeah. of a sudden. And uh I really miss Warzone 1. It's not really? the same at all. Oh, it, wow. I don't like it. Oh, no. I do want to keep playing it and try to get a little better, yeah. but I, I'm not happy with it. Maybe I got to try mouse and keyboard because I've been so... I haven't played a shooter with a controller in months. Yeah. And that's what I usually go for, but I don't know. The, the problem with Call of Duty, it's, 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 it's a lot about movement. Yeah. And a controller helps with that a lot. So I, I don't know how I feel. No banana suit says I'm enjoying it more once I've gotten my footing. I need footing very bad. Aim assist on controller is off the charts. That's what I mean. I, I like. I used to play Call of Duty with a controller. Now I'm playing Valorant with a mouse and keyboard. I feel like I might have to give mouse and keyboard a try. But the problem is with mouse and keyboard, I have to think about what button I want to press. Yeah. Because I don't know where all the buttons are. It's not second nature to me. Uh, Mark Holla asks, why do you feel that 3D Pokemon games are popular compared to 3D Digimon games when Digimon games are better? Uh, it doesn't have the same brand value. No. Uh, di- also, it is a serious question. What is the best Digimon game? People go nuts for Digimon games. But like, so I watched the Jaden animation where she tried to play a Digimon game and she asked like, what's the Digimon game you recommend? And everybody gave a different answer. <laughs> I, I and they were all like in low, low metacritic scores so. oh my god yeah i don't know i mean it i always perceived digimon as the knockoff pokemon yeah was i wrong in that assessment i'm asking will not an eu <laughs> <laughs> what knockoff in terms of well like back in the day it it seemed to try to take the same trajectory that pokemon did Pokemon had a game, and right. then they made an anime, and then they were a blockbuster hit. Right. And it seemed like Digimon was like, we have the game. Yeah. Oh, wait, Pokemon made an anime. We got to do that now. It was definitely riding that wave, mm. but I feel like there... And now I'm not going to be able to think of a single example, but I feel like there were a lot of things that were trying to ride Mega the Pokemon Man. wave. Mega Man. Oh, Battle Network. Battle Network. Yeah. Yeah. And like others that I can't think of. But yeah, there were there were a lot of things trying to ride that wave. I think there was a Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon GBA game. It was like Crash Purple and Spyro Orange. And they were like sister games that can like go back and forth between each other. Like Pokemon Red and Blue. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Like even they were in on it. Uh, Mark Hollis says, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. And then K-Jack immediately says, I tried Cyber Sleuth. Hated it and dropped it after not very long. I have heard, I had heard that that was a good. I game. have heard like Jaden Animations mentions that in in um in her video. Like most people say that, but that's not like a traditional Digimon game. Mm. So the last one that came out was Survive, and yeah. I heard not great things. <laughs> um, apparently that's a visual novel. Uh. M. Skelton says, Bob, would you recommend the Gully Kit King Kong controller or the 8-Bit Do Ultimate? One that you did a video on recently. Depends on what you want. I think the 8-Bit Do Ultimate controller is an all-around better controller. I think the Gully Kit controller is very cool because of the macro functionality. If you don't care about the macro functionality, I think the 8-Bit Do controller is probably a better controller. I do kind of like the buttons on the gully kit a little better, but 
overall, again, I think the Ape is a better controller. You do also have the option. You have you get a fucking dock with it. <laughs> you get the uh, uh, the dongle. The dongle. You can have two point four gigahertz, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, so I left this out of the video, but apparently the dock has USB pass through. Okay. So you plug the dock into your Switch. Oh. And then you turn the 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 controller to 2.4 gigahertz mode. Okay. And it's always connected. Oh wow. Yeah. So and I think it also wakes the switch up. Oh wow. Because of yeah. that. So uh I leave the dock plugged into the switch and I just yeah. pick the controller up and it's good to go. That's cool. It's fucking awesome. Um uh, I will say uh, other people are mentioning this. Uh the gully kit does support more platforms so it has x input that's okay. important too but that also might not matter to you because again the ape do one if you get the one that's for switch uh a lot of pc games support it anyway a lot of pc games yeah. support the pro controller so it's really not that big of a deal uh dark spider david says the death animations locked behind a season pass combined with the review embargo lifting the night before release day has me concerned for callisto uh, i didn't know about that the embargo was the night before that you, when they're trying to hold it off until like the eleventh hour, they're trying to hide something. Yeah, something's not right there. Yeah. I mean, I have faith because it's you know the uh, people yeah. that made Dead, Dead Space, Space yeah. doing their own thing, doing Dead Space. Yeah, uh, but there's potential for failure. Yeah, didn't that guy uh, go on Wired and do one of those like ask a game dev or something? He, I think he went. He went on something like that where he, he explained how they did uh, the scene in Dead Space where the tentacle grabs you and like pulls you into the hole. Because apparently that was really fucking complicated to do mm -hmm. in the 360 days. Uh, Will, do you think a DCEU MCU crossover is possible? Yeah, when uh, Warner Brothers finally sells DC to Disney because <laughs> they're just divesting everything right now. I yeah, think, that'll happen. I think in 20 years, yeah, you might see a hint of something. Yeah. Maybe even a nod. I mean, think of this. Thor is technically public domain. True. <laughs> so they could reference the Norse god of Thor. He yes. just has to look significantly different from Chris Hemsworth. Mm -hmm. So Liam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Danny Reyes says, do you all feel like all games that have come out this year have come out incomplete except for god of war um i think this is a lot of incomplete games yeah i wouldn't say all i, I we we had a episode where we talked about all the game of the year stuff and i wasn't impressed with a lot of stuff. yeah i don't know i just feel like i i've i haven't played many 2022 games this year uh the ones i have shredder's revenge felt complete and roller drone felt complete but those are those smaller indie games yeah you know, they're not, you know, they're not beholden to the same, like, stringent release dates as, like, you know, Sonic Frontiers or Call of Duty are. Right, so. right. Okay. Well, I think we're done here, guys. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, we got, uh, we got one under the wire. Make 90 Fox bits. With 90 bits. Hey, Wolf Bro, sorry that I haven't caught a stream for months, but I thought I would just stop by and say hi. Oh, uh, side note, I'll be in the city for five days to see Fish for the NYE run and need help deciding what to fill my time with. Keep up the great work. Seeing Fish and I need help deciding what to fill my time with. Yeah. Was, oh, with, with wait, was, oh, with, in New York? Is that yeah. what you're trying to say? Uh, Go to, uh, food gallery 32 the korean food court that's a great spot um that's also by madison square garden i assume yes. they're gonna be playing madison square garden um fucking hit up uh kino kunya the bookstore hit, hit up nintendo new york city yes definitely do that uh, uh that's my normal route yeah to <laughs> jnl game is is uh mm -hmm. is kind of in that route also uh, Chelsea Market is always great. Yes, Chelsea yes. Market is great. That's a little further, but I also approve with it. Chelsea Market, uh, 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 St. Mark's. Yes. All that shit. Mega Dragon with 100 bits. So what did you bros get for Black Friday? That's a good question. That is a good question. I got absolutely nothing. 
I got a lot more stuff than I thought I was going to get. We had a list, and I, I had Dark Type. He, he sent me the list of things that I said I wanted to get, and I uh, didn't buy any of them. The only, I, I did get the Calabunga collection, mm -hmm. so that's coming. I uh, got a couple of figures that were on good sale. Uh, apparently, you know that um, Sandisk drive that you have? Yeah. Uh, front on their website, they're I just selling, dropped it. <laughs> on their website, they're selling like the terabyte version of it, or like a, a similar drive for only like fifty four bucks. Fifty four? Yeah. So I snagged that real quick. Fuck. Yeah. Um. What did I, what else did I? I didn't get like a lot of stuff. I got like little little things here and there, mm -hmm. and most of the stuff I bought wasn't even a Black Friday sale. It was just stuff I needed for the house that day. Yeah, no, I got a lot of stuff for the house, but none yeah. of it was a Black Friday deal. There was a really good deal on a Logitech Superlight mouse. Yeah. It was $85, and that mouse is usually $150. Yeah. And then I went to my P.O. box, and a Glorious sent me a Superlight mouse. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to spend $85. There were two mouse. microphones that I was thinking of getting, because they were both on good sale, and they were both good microphones, but I decided to hold off and wait for, like, because they were side address, and I wanted ones like this where you speak directly into it. Right, right, right. Um, there is, there was a mixer that is on sale now that I want to talk to you about after the chat. See if you think it's a good one. Okay. So, other than that, yeah. I still have a lot to do over here. <laughs> uh, like, I, I, I've been, I've just been getting boxes every day. I gotta fucking yeah. stop. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Hey, I'm uh, going to be streaming on Thursday here on Twitch, uh, and uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of giveaways throughout the month of uh, December, thanks to a very special sponsor. I might have to download a plugin for Chrome, but oh that means, you know, <laughs> it's going to give away a lot of stuff, yeah. all right? Uh, and that'll start on Thursday. I don't want to say anything yet because the you know I want to make sure it's all official. Yeah. First, but there's a lot of cool shit going on. They're they're they're, they're really hooking it up. So uh, come over to twitch.tv slash Wolfden at some point during the month of uh, uh, December while we're live, and you might you'll hear about it on the podcast probably at some point. Uh, thanks for being here. Check out Wood. He's streaming Pokemon, uh, and we'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye.